Okay, so the first thing I want to say is um, we haven't done any quizzes yet, and we have to start. So um, this Wednesday, we're going to have our first quiz, and we're going to start. So um, quiz one is going to be at the end of class on Wednesday. Um, the quizzes are short answer questions about stuff I've said in lectures, so the way to get ready for it is to skim your notes, uh, look for points that, um, you know, sort of key points, and, and I'm just going to be asking questions about those. Uh, what does net force mean? What, you know, um, what, are the, what are the four things you have to choose before you can use the constant acceleration equations, those kind of things, okay? So, um, so read your notes. Uh, these are cumulative, so uh, they can go back to the beginning. Anybody have any questions about that? These are low stakes things. They add up to a total of 10% of your grade, and there'll be, you know, a bunch of them. So, and the lowest, I think it's the lowest two quiz scores get dropped from, but, um, it's just an incentive. I'm trying to get you to go back and not just take notes, but go back and reread your notes. So that's what that is. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay. No calculations, just short answer questions. Um, all right. Anybody have any homework questions you'd like me to go over? Okay. Well, uh, we're talking about Newton's second law, and the thing we're going to get into today is um, rolling and sliding problems. Well, we've already done some rolling and sliding problems. The thing that's going to be different with this is we're going to start dealing with cases where things are rolling or sliding along inclined surfaces. Um, we've done problems where things are rolling or sliding on horizontal surfaces. Now we're going to be dealing with angles and stuff. Um, and the short answer to this, how to approach this, is um, if you have a thing like this card is rolling along this inclined surface. Um, to simplify the calculations, what we're going to do is use a coordinate system where the y-axis points straight out of the surface like that, and the x-axis then is along the surface like that. Okay. So we're going to use a coordinate system orientation with the y-axis straight out of the surface. And then that means the x-axis is along the surface. Uh, why didn't we do this when we did rolling and sliding problems on horizontal surfaces? Well, the answer is we did, you know. Um, notice that if that incline, uh, say that that's on like a hydraulic lift or whatever, and you lower that incline down so that incline is horizontal, that coordinate system would revert back to our usual coordinate system, okay? So we've always been using a coordinate system like this. We just haven't yet had problems where that incline was, you know, where it was anything besides horizontal. Are you with me on that? Okay, so what are the, what are the benefits and the drawbacks of using this rotated coordinate system? There's a little bit of both going on. Um, so, let me list these out. Um, 
Um, the first benefit of this is that, like if we were using a normal coordinate system, so say we're using a, just a horizontal vertical coordinate system on a thing moving like this. Notice that the acceleration is going to be along, you know, along the surface. So that's going to have some weird combination of x and y components if we're using a regular coordinate system. But if we're using this rotating coordinate system, then the acceleration is just always along the x-axis. So that's the first benefit of this. Uh, the acceleration vector is just always equal to a0. And this a can be plus or minus. Okay, so that's, so this rotated coordinate system is a lot easier to use for acceleration. It's also easier to use for normal forces, pushing forces from the ground. In this coordinate, like the direction of the pushing contact from the ground, notice is perpendicular to the surface toward the chosen body, so it's at an angle, right? But since our coordinate system is also at an angle, uh, this n is just always gonna be in the positive y direction. Um, and all of these, so both of these two things and the last benefit I'm gonna give you are letting us represent these vectors really simply instead of using complicated cosine and sine relationships, okay? So the normal force is zero n, and this n is always positive. The third benefit is the friction force. Um, the friction force is parallel to the surface. So again, it, with a normal standard coordinate system, uh, that friction force would be some cosine sine thing with the angle. But if we're using this red coordinate system oriented uh, along with the incline, this friction force is gonna be plus or minus coefficient times the normal force and then zero for y. Okay, so there are the three benefits, and those three benefits are why we're using this rotated coordinate system, okay? It's not that you have to do it. You, you can always choose whatever coordinate system you want. It's that it makes this calculation simpler because of these three things. Unfortunately, there's one drawback that we're gonna have to deal with, and that drawback is the weight force, okay? Because the weight force is always just straight down, right? So in a horizontal vertical coordinate system, the weight force is always in the negative y direction. But now in this coordinate system, a vector straight down is at some kind of funny angle. You know? So we're gonna have to use cosine and sine to represent the weight now, which is the, the one thing that was always easy before. Okay? Um, so the weight force, now is going to be um, mg times the cosine of some angle. I'll call it phi. mg times the sine of some angle. Uh, and I want you to, one thing I want you to notice about this as we go through problems is um, that phi is always going to be 270 degrees plus or minus like theta, where theta is the angle the incline makes with horizontal. That won't, doesn't make much sense yet, but as we start going through it, I'll try to keep pointing that out, okay? Okay, so... Um, any questions so far? 
let's let's just get into some problems and you'll see how this works. So uh, let me do start with just the simplest problem you could have. Um, so let's say. We have an angle of 20 degrees. And you have a cart rolling down the incline. Um, and let's say that the mass of this cart is uh, Let's, let's say it has a mass of M, okay? So one, one of the things we're gonna see here is that the mass of this card isn't gonna affect the motion. Um, and we wanna know what's the acceleration vector of this cart. Well, since this is a rolling or sliding problem, this is a rolling problem, uh, we're gonna put our coordinate system with the y-axis straight out of the surface and our x-axis parallel to the surface. Um, and I'm gonna start with a free body diagram. Okay, so there's a weight force straight down of the mass times G, or I'll write this as 9.81 M. And then there's a pushing force from the ground that's perpendicular to the surface toward the chosen body. And that's the normal force. There aren't any other forces acting. Anybody have any questions about that free body diagram? You can see from my free body diagram, those two things aren't parallel, right? The weight force is straight down. The normal force though isn't straight up. It's perpendicular to the surface. Uh, and let's start representing these forces. So how would you represent, how would you calculate the components of these forces? Um, well, you can see that that force N is straight in the positive y direction. And that's one of the things I said was a benefit of this. So that normal force we're just gonna represent as zero N, okay? But the weight force we gotta think about a little bit. So here's our coordinate system. And here's our weight force. Uh, this is 9.81 times the mass. And we want to take, so this vector is going to be 9.81 M times the cosine and sine of this angle, where you go from the positive x-axis around to here. Okay. Um, so what is that angle? Well, it is. Yes, very good. Yep. And uh, the way you figure that out is the angle between, so notice the negative y-axis is like the 270 degree line. And so the angle between the weight and the 270 degree line is the angle that the incline makes with horizontal. Okay. So this is... This angle here is 20 degrees. And so we're gonna look at this and see that we're gonna go from the positive x 90, 180. We get to 270 and then go a little bit past it. That's not always the case. If it's tilted the other way, you don't quite make it to 270. You would fall, in this case, 20 degrees short. But in this example, we'll go 270 plus 20, so 290 is the angle we wanna use, okay? So this angle is 290 degrees. Mm -hmm. 
And so the weight force then is mg times the cosine of 290, mg times the sine of 290, And that gives you um, 0 0.342 mg, uh, negative 0 0.940 mg. And g is 9.81. Uh, can someone calculate 0 0.342 times 9.81? Okay, so 3.3, I'll call it 3.36 M, and then uh, 0.940 times 9.81. Negative 9.22. So negative 9.22 M. Is everyone with me on how I calculated those components? Or anybody have any questions about it right now? Yeah. Oh, uh, because that's the weight force. Um, so to get the weight force, you always multiply the mass times 9.81 meters per second squared. Wow. So in this case, instead of giving a number for the mass, I just called it M. But you still have to do that to, to get the weight force. Any other questions? OK, so now we'll go to Newton's second law. The left side has these two forces in. So the first one is. 0 n the second one is 3.36 m negative 9.22 m and that's equal to the mass m times the acceleration and one of the benefits that I mentioned for using this coordinate system is that the acceleration vector is just a zero, always. So um, this is a zero. Well, we're trying to calculate this vector. So we're trying to calculate a in order to find what this vector is. Uh, so I'm going to use just the x equation And we get that 0 plus 3.36m is equal to ma. You can divide both sides by m, and that cancels out. And you get that a is equal to 3.36 meters per second squared. So what does m stand for? Mass. Okay. Yeah, so I, you know, I could have put in 10 kilograms or something. I'm just trying to show here that the mass cancels out, and so this acceleration would be the same no matter what mass we have. Okay. Because no matter what that value of m is, we get this, acceler this a value of 3.36, and that means we get an acceleration vector of 3.360. And if you want to visualize that acceleration vector, that's in the positive x direction. So down the ramp like this with a magnitude of 3.36 meters per second squared. Any questions about that? Okay, let me do one where the incline is the other direction. So let's say this time the ramp is like this. Let's say this is 30 degrees.
This time I'll give this a mass of, let's say, two kilograms. Um, but what we saw last time, and you can, uh, you can assume it'll apply here too, is no matter what that mass is, the acceleration would be the same. Okay. And let's say that there's an external force pushing this way at five newtons. And we want to know what's the acceleration vector of this cart. We're going to use a coordinate system again with the y-axis pointing this way and the x-axis this way. So, uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll find out. Um, if that 5 Newton force wasn't there, just to sort of wrap your heads around this, uh, gravity would make it roll down the incline, right? And so, so then the acceleration vector would be in the negative x direction. Do you see that? Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the 5 Newton force. We'll, we'll have to calculate and see. Maybe that'll overcome the, the effect of weight pulling it down the incline, and it'll be accelerating up the ramp. Or maybe the weight will be stronger, and it'll be accelerating down. We'll find out. Okay. So a free body diagram. We have a weight force down of 2 times 9.81, so 19.62, sorry. And we have the 5 Newton force pushing this way. And then we have the pushing force from the incline, the normal force, perpendicular to the surface, like that. Um, and so now, first, let's figure out, like we did last time, uh, what that weight force vector is going to be. Okay, so here's the x-axis, y-axis. The negative y-axis is going to be sort of our key reference. The weight force is straight down. So what's the angle, the angle between the negative y-axis and the weight force? 50. It's going to be the 30 from the, from the ramp, okay? So uh, this is 30 degrees. And the magnitude of this force is 19.62. Okay, well, if that's 30... We, and we want the angle that goes from the positive x-axis all the way around to the vector. So this is the angle we want. It would be 90, 180, and then 30 degrees short of 270. So in this case, it's going to be 240. Okay, so 240 degrees. And so our weight force is 19.62 times cosine of 240 and 19.62 times sine of 240. And before I calculate this, you know, we're used to the weight force having a negative, right? Like we're used to it being in the negative y. Where did the negative go in this representation of the force? Like, why is there no negative there? So, yeah, so the, the negative sign that you usually get is just a direction, remember. And so if you're using cosine and sine, those directions are done for you by the cosine and sine. So like, if, like in a normal coordinate system, the angle for the weight force would be 270. And if you plugged it in, you'd get zero, negative, whatever. And that's what we're used to. So just put it in as positive. The cosine and sine will do negatives for you if you need them.
Okay. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, so cosine of 240 uh, is a point, I can't do that. Um, what's, uh, oh yeah, right, yes. So negative 9.81, I should have been able to do that, but I can't do the other one. Negative 16 point what? Oh yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, sure. I'll leave it like this. Okay, so now we can go to Newton's second law. Um, and let's put in all these forces. There's the weight, so I'll put that in first. Negative 9.81, negative 16.99. Uh, then we have the normal force. We're used to dealing with that. That's in the positive y direction of our rotated coordinate system. And then that 5 Newton force, notice that that is in the positive x direction of our coordinate system, so that's just 5, 0. And that's equal to the mass of 2 times the acceleration vector of A0. What if the negative 9.81 the negative 7 That is the, uh, those are the components of the weight force. Okay, so uh, it's negative 9.81 Newtons. So basically, if you made this a right triangle, uh, it's, 9.81 in the negative x direction and 16.99 uh, in the negative y direction. Uh, we want to calculate the acceleration vector, which is this. So we need to calculate that variable a. And so the x equation says negative 9.81 plus 0, plus 5 is equal to 2a. And so negative 4.81 is equal to 2a. And so a is equal to negative 2.405 meters per second squared. Now plug that back into the acceleration vector. And you get that the acceleration vector is negative 2.4050. Or if you want to visualize it, uh, it's accelerating in the negative x direction. So this way, with a magnitude of 2.405. So even with that 5 Newton force being applied to help hold it up the ramp, it's still, that's not enough to overcome gravity and it's going to be accelerating down. Any questions about that? Um, you can do the kind of problems that we've been doing so far on inclines now. So um, let me do one with a couple of bodies. Let's say we have an incline of 40 degrees. And we have two carts connected to each other by a cable. Let's say this one's one kilogram. This one's two kilograms. And there's a force pulling them up the ramp like this of 15 newtons.
what's the tension in the cable, you know, the cable that's connecting those two bodies. Uh, I could have asked what's the force vector the cable applies to those, um, but since I just asked for the tension, you don't need to give this as a vector. You can just, we can just calculate that number T and we're done, okay? Okay, well, we're gonna use a coordinate system with the y-axis straight out and the x-axis along the surface. What should we isolate to start this problem? We're gonna approach it exactly the same way as any collection of bodies with the same acceleration. So we'll isolate the whole system together to calculate the acceleration, and then we'll go and isolate one of the individual ones to calculate the tension. So free body diagram of the whole thing. Uh, there's a weight force acting down that's equal to uh, the total mass, 3 kilograms times 9.81, so 29.43. Then there's a combined pushing force from the ground. I'm going to put it all at one spot, and I'll call that N total. And the only other place the surroundings make contact with this boundary is that 15 Newton force. Okay. Uh, the coordinate system looks like this. And the weight force is that, with a magnitude of 29.43. What's the angle between the negative y-axis and the weight force? 40, yep. And so that means that the angle that we want uh, that goes from the positive x-axis to here in this case is 270 minus 40. Uh, so this angle is going to be um, 230. Well, uh, so the components are 29.43 times the cosine of 230, 29.43 times the sine of 230. Can someone calculate those for me? Okay. Thank you. Those are the components of that weight force. So now we can go to Newton's second law. And we got negative 18.92, negative 22.54, plus zero in total. plus 15, zero, is equal to the mass, three, times the acceleration, that's always just A, zero, uh, we want the acceleration vector, 
So I'm going to use the x equation. It says negative 18.92 plus 0 plus 15 is equal to 3a. So negative 3.92 is equal to 3a. And you get a is equal to negative 1.3, one kind of thing, meters per second squared. Plug that into the acceleration vector, and you get that the acceleration vector is um, negative 1.310. And if you want to visualize it, it's in the negative x direction, so this way at 1.31 meters per second squared. Okay, so even with that 15 Newton force, this is accelerating in the negative x direction, so that 15 Newton force wasn't quite enough to hold it up the ramp. Okay. And now we're going to isolate one of the two individual bodies, and in this case it doesn't matter which one. You get the same answer immediately either way. Um, let's do the, let's isolate the one kilogram. Uh, so we have a weight force of 1 times 9.81, 9.81 newtons. We have a pushing force that I'll call N1. The 15 newton force doesn't act on the boundary of the 1 kilogram. The only other force that acts on it is the cable pulling on it. So there's a pulling force over here, parallel to the cable, away from the body, and I'll call that T. Um, the weight force of this is different than the combined weight force, but the angle is still the same. Okay, so I'm still just going to use that angle of 230 degrees for the weight force. So the weight force is going to be 9.81 times the cosine of 230, 9.81 times the sine of 230, Can you calculate that for me, too? Um, okay. Okay, thank you. So those are the components of the weight force on this body. And so now Newton's second law. Uh, says negative 6.31, negative 7.54, plus 0 and 1, plus T0, is equal to the mass 1, times the acceleration vector that we calculated in the first part, negative 1.310. We want to calculate t, so I'll use the x equation again. So negative 6.31 plus 0 plus t is equal to negative 1.31. And so uh, T is equal to 
five newtons. Any questions about that? Okay, the other type of problem that we'll use this for, these are all rolling problems, uh, but we'll also use it with sliding problems. Um, so let's say, uh, We have an incline that makes a 20 degree angle with the horizontal. And we have a box that has a mass of five kilograms. And at the instant shown, let's say it's moving down the ramp. Remember, for friction problems, you always have to know the direction of the velocity. If the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction is 0 0.2, what's the acceleration vector of the block? And then second, is it speeding up or slowing down? Well, our coordinate system is going to be like this. Um, a free body diagram. There's a weight force down of 5 times 9.81, so 49.05. There's a friction contact with the ground, so that's two parts. One is a pushing force. I'll call that N. And the second one is a friction force that's opposite the direction of motion. So that's this way with a magnitude of 0 0.2 times N. And the most common mistake people make is thinking that this means 0 0.2 newtons. Remember that this is 0.2 times this pushing force, okay? That says the harder you smash these two things together, the bigger the, bigger the friction gets, okay? All right, well, uh, let's draw the coordinate system and figure out the weight force. This is 49.05. This angle is 20 degrees. And so the total angle from the x-axis, bless you, uh, what's, the, what's the angle from the positive x-axis to the weight force there? 290. Right, good. So um, this is going to be 49.05. Uh, hold on. Okay, so 49.05 times the cosine and sine of 290 degrees. Can someone compute that for me? Yeah. Yeah, right. That's a key thing. You're right. Um, well, just remember that 
based on uh, the direction of the incline, you know the orientation of the coordinate system, okay? And you know that the, the weight force is always just straight down, okay? So with the coordinate system tipped like this, straight down falls on this side of that negative y-axis. If it was tipped the other way, it would fall on this side of it, okay? So you just have to visualize where does straight down fall compared to the negative y-axis. It has to do with which way it's tipped. Any other questions right now? Did you punch that in? What did you get? Um, 16.71. Okay. Thank you. So now we'll go to Newton's second law. Uh, so we got 16.78, negative 46.09. Uh, then you have the pushing force, 0N. Then you have the friction force. Is that in the positive or negative x direction, the friction force? Negative. Um, and so this is negative 0 0.2 times n, 0. And that's equal to the mass, 5, times the acceleration, a0. Okay, we want the acceleration. Uh, look, we look at the two equations we have. So the x equation says 16.78 plus 0 minus 0 0.2 times n is equal to 5a. And the y equation says negative 46.09 plus n plus zero is equal to zero. In all the problems we've done today, we've just been able to go straight to the x equation to solve whatever we're looking for. But notice that this time we can't do that because that one x equation has two variables in it. And this is always gonna come up in these friction problems. So the way to do these friction problems always is use the y equation to find n and then plug that in into the x equation. So always you're going to go first the y equation to find n, then plug in into the x equation. Um, okay, so the y equation says negative 46.09 plus n is equal to 0. Add 46.09 to both sides and you get n is equal to positive 46.09. Now plug that into the x equation and you get 16.78 minus 0 0.2 times 46.09 is equal to 5a. Um, nine point, I think that's about, can someone just calculate this for me? 9.2. Do you want a? Or a? Uh, or 9 point. Okay, a, a is 1.5, is that what you got? Okay, so you get A is uh, 1.51 meters per second squared. And so for the vector, this is 1.510. Or if you want to think about the direction, it's in the positive x direction, 
with a magnitude of 1.51 meters per second squared. Well, since we know the direction of the velocity, you have to to do these problems, and now we know the direction of the acceleration. Is this speeding up or slowing down? Yeah. Um, the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction, so this is speeding up. So the friction is trying to slow it down, but gravity is stronger than the friction and is still making it speed up. Uh, because, so, um, the reason that we got a positive answer? Or because it's speeding up because they're both positive, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right, exactly. Well, they could both be negative as long as they're in the same direction. Yeah, that's right. Any other questions? Okay, let's... Um, Let's do another one. Um, so let's say we have a block on an incline of 30 degrees. Let's say this is 10 kilograms. Um, and let's say that at this instant, the block is sliding up the ramp. So the way that would work is that somebody would have given this a big shove, and then we're looking at it while it's still moving. Um, what coefficient of friction would be required for this to maintain a constant velocity. That would never work. <laughs> Sorry, change the direction to this. Okay, this will work now. Um, Anybody have any questions about physically what I'm asking here? So basically we're saying like, how much friction do these two materials have to have between them um, so that this uh, box has zero acceleration? Remember, zero acceleration is constant velocity, okay? So a free body diagram Looks like this, 10 times 9.81. And you have a pushing force this way. The friction force is opposite the direction of the velocity, so this way. And I'm just gonna call that mu times n. We're gonna have to calculate that mu. Here's our coordinate system. The weight force is this, and this angle is 30 degrees. Um, so the angle from the positive x-axis is 240. So we have 98.1 times the cosine of 240. 98.1 times the sine of 240. Uh, and that is equal to negative uh, 49.05 for the x. And then uh, 
Can someone calculate 98.1 times sine of 240? Negative 84.96. So now Newton's second law says negative 49.05, negative 84.96, plus 0n, plus mu times n, 0, is equal to the mass, 10, times the acceleration. What acceleration do we want if we're figuring out where it has constant velocity? Zero, yep. So we have two equations. The x equation says negative 49.05 plus zero plus mu times n is equal to zero. And the y equation says negative 84.96 plus n plus zero is equal to zero. Well, even though the form of this looks a little different than it did before, we still have to first use the y equation to find n and then plug it into x. So the y equation says if you add 84.96 to both sides, n is equal to 84.96. Plug that into the x equation, you get negative 49.05 plus 84.96 mu is equal to zero. So 84.96 mu is equal to 49.05. Divide both sides by 84.96, and what do you get from u? What is it? 0 0.58. So if the coefficient of friction, you know, I don't know what material, but say that there's some pair of materials where you look up their coefficient of kinetic friction and it gives 0.58, say particle board and, you know, uh, Play-Doh whatever, um, then this 10 kilogram block being slid down the ramp is going to continue sliding down with a constant velocity. Yep? Uh, if mu is friction, what does n represent? n is the pushing force from the ground. Okay. So let, let me uh, do this again. Um, you probably remember. I, I gave sort of this little demonstration, whatever example before. But um, right now, if you if you calculated the pushing force from the table up onto this thing, it would be equal to the weight of this thing, okay? Because it's horizontal and there's nothing else on it. Um, and the friction force isn't too high, you know. Like I can push this middle slide a little bit. But if I like put my like full weight on this, pushing it down against the table, that means that the table has to push up way, way harder in order for this thing not to sink into the table. Okay, so me pushing down on the top of this makes that normal force n get really big, and the effect of that normal force n getting really big is that it would be really hard to make this slide. You know what I mean? Like you could come over and push just about as hard as you could and it wouldn't move. And the reason for that is as that normal force goes up, the friction force always goes up. That's why you're always multiplying to figure out what the friction force is. Uh, come on. To figure out what the friction force is, you're always taking that coefficient and multiplying by how hard those surfaces are being mashed together. Right, right. Okay. Any other questions about that? 
Okay. So um, we're getting close to done with uh, the Newton second law stuff. Um, next class, we're going to do the last sort of topic in this, and then we'll talk about Newton's third law, and then we'll be done with this. Um, okay, any last minute questions? Okay, remember on Wednesday, we're going to have the quiz. So start looking back over your notes and be ready to answer short answer questions about that. All right, see you later.